Welcome to this regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Um, I apologize for starting five minutes late. We had a me meeting going on in the other room and we ran a little bit late. Um, could we have the, it is Monday, November 14th, 2005. Uh, could we have the roll call by the town clerk, please? Chairman Swift Kayata. Here. Councilor Backer. Here. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor Lynch. Here. Councilor McKenney. Here. Councilor Moles. Present. Councilor Roberts. Still here. And the town manager. Yep. And town clerk. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we have a number of presentations. I'm going to be going down to the uh, podium there. Um, do we have anybody here from the Cape Elizabeth High School golf team? Jack, I gotta hand you these, please. Thank you. Thank you. you don't look scared. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. It's a good thing. Um, I would like to read this proc proclamation to congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Boys Golf Team on the main Class B state championship that they won. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth High School Boys Golf Team recently completed its 2005 season. And whereas on the links of Natanas Golf Course in Vassalboro, Maine, the team met the best golfers in the state, and after the completion of all the 18-hole rounds, the Cape Elizabeth team score bested that of any other Class B team by one stroke. And whereas this victory followed the attainment of a course record for a high school team in the Western Maine Finals at Willowdale Golf Course in Scarborough, and whereas the state championship match showed that practice, determination, golfing skill, and character all contributed to the great success of the Cape Elizabeth golfers. Now, therefore, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council does hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Boys Golf Class B state champions, their coaches Greg Sandell and Eric Lutz, and all others who have contributed over the years to their achievement as the best high school Class B golf team in 2005 in the state of Maine. Dated this 14th day of November, the year 2005 in Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and it's signed by all the town councilors. Do you want to say anything? Okay. He's passed on the remarks. Okay. Um, next. Is there anybody here from the uh, girls, the high school girls cross country team? Okay, we will. Um, whoops, I'm breaking this. We will. Should I read the whole proclamation? Sure. Okay. Um, we are congratulating them on earning the 2005 Maine Class B state championship in girls cross country. So I will read this uh, town council proclamation. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth girls cross country team earned the 2005 Maine Class B state championship, and whereas the championship meet at Levitt High School in Turner followed team victories in the Western Maine finals and in the regionals, and whereas the five point victory was achieved with significant depth from the team with each runner doing their best despite injuries and the gruel of the cross country season, and whereas Coach Mary Ann Doss led this balanced and devoted team in the finest tradition of Cape Elizabeth track, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Girls Cross Country Team on the state championship, and we salute them, their coaches, their parents, and all others whose efforts helped lead to this victory, dated the 14th day of November 2005 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and it's signed by the town councilors. And we congratulate them. Okay. 
Okay, last but certainly not least, is there anyone here from the Cape Elizabeth Boys cross country team? And I think we have one counselor who has a particular interest, if she'd like to come down and stand with me. <laughs> it's his mother. <laughs> You can stand next to your side. Okay, this is another town council uh, proclamation. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth Boys cross country team earned the 2005 Maine Class B State Championship, and whereas the championship meet in Turner resulted in the first state cross country championship since 1989, and whereas the three-point victory was achieved with significant depth from the team with five runners in the top 20 finishers, but with only one runner in the top 10 finishers, and whereas the point score of the Cape Elizabeth team was the best of any team in any class statewide, and whereas coach David Weatherby led this balanced and devoted team in the finest tradition of Cape Elizabeth track, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Boys Cross Country Team on the state championship and we salute them, their coaches, their parents, <laughs> and all others whose efforts helped lead to this victory, dated this 14th day of November 2005 at Cape Elizabeth and signed by all the town councillors. We obviously have a very impressive group of high school athletes in this town, and I'm sure we all join them and their parents in celebrating their victories. Okay, um, that was the presentations. The next thing on our agenda is the minutes of the meeting held October 19th. Do I hear a motion? I move that we accept the minutes of the meeting number 250405 held on October 19, 2005. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. <coughs> are, is there any discussion or are there any corrections? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, reports and correspondence is the next thing on our um, agenda. Is there anything, Carol? Well, I'd just like to mention I was very pleased to attend a dinner that was um, to celebrate the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust's 20th year um, in Cape Elizabeth. And um, it was a very nice uh, event. And I'd just like to mention that in that 20 years, the Land Trust has preserved 565 acres of farmland, woods, wetlands, all for the benefit of the people in Cape Elizabeth uh, to recreate and have scenic views and, um, and all. So I um, want to congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust for all that they have done to enhance our town in the 20 years. Thank you. Anything else? Mike Moll? Uh, I'd also like to piggyback on that and mention that I was also at that dinner and Carol's being quite shy because she was given an award that evening as one of the founding members of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust uh, to much accolade there. Uh, while I have the microphone, I would also mention that uh, I served the town as vice chairman of the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee, putting together the county budget as we do each fall and Cape Elizabeth is going to play host to one of the three regional meetings that the county commissioners hold as public hearings on the county budget. That'll be here in the council chamber on Thursday evening, December 1st at 7 o'clock p.m. And I hope many people from the public can come down. There'll be a presentation on what's in the county budget and then an opportunity for anyone to ask questions or give comment. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Um, I have a couple of things. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank our town clerk as well as our election warden um, and all the election workers for running a very smooth election on uh, 
last Tuesday. I'd like to congratulate Cynthia Dill, who is here in this room. She's an incoming, she was elected and she's incoming um, and will be starting her official work as a counselor next month uh, when the new council year starts. I want to thank the public for re-electing me. I really appreciate their faith and uh, I uh, am very grateful for the opportunity to continue to serve the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Um, since there was an election, that also means that uh, we have not just an, a new councillor coming in, but we have a councillor who was here for his last meeting, and that is Jack Roberts. So I have a few remarks that I prepared. <clears throat> Tonight is Jack Roberts' last town council meeting after six and a half years and two terms of faithful service to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Jack has been an inspiration because he truly believes and he practices his belief that good local government can accomplish important things, big and small, that have a real impact on the lives of every citizen. Jack has contributed greatly over the past six years. He has overseen both the relocation of community services into a beautifully rehabilitated building and the upgrading of our police, fire, and public works facilities. He initiated the idea for the town's very important real estate acquisition and disposition policy, which lays out a framework for decisions about town-owned property and which ensures that citizens have the opportunity to participate in the public process. He has watched carefully over the Fowler Road area, um, as we saw when he helped make sure that our newest cell tower in town was moved away from that neighborhood to a new location in the woods, a more appropriate location in the woods off of Bowery Beach Road. But Jack's first real love, other than his wife, was and is environmental issues. Through his hands-on work with the Conservation Commission and on his own, he has helped ensure that Cape's Greenbelt system is second to none. Jack, I think, has probably personally cleared more trails in Cape Elizabeth than anyone else in town. Um, and for, well, for thanks, but not for a whole lot of pay. So, and to, to the detriment of his back at some times, but we, we appreciate that. One of Jack's great virtue, virtues is that when he has made decisions on the council, his constant focus has been on what would be in the best long-term interests of everyone in town. He educates himself on matters that come before us. He thinks seriously and carefully about the issues. He shares his views and is often a passionate advocate, but he always is willing to listen to others' points of view. He is also concerned for not only the citizens who live in Cape Elizabeth, but also the municipal employees who work here and help make it a great town. Jack has worked hard and has dedicated himself to the job of counselor. He has made it a point to go to meetings of many other town boards and commissions, which is an important council goal, and I think he's definitely exceeded the rest of our efforts in that respect. Last but not least, while Jack has taken his duties as counselor seriously, he seldom takes himself too seriously. His good humor has helped me on numerous occasions. His common sense and down-to-earth approach make him a pleasure to work with. Jack Roberts is a dedicated public servant in the best sense of the word. I am proud to call him my friend, and I am honored to have served with him on the council. On behalf of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, please join me in congratulating and thanking him for his years of service to us all. And I'm sure Jack will want to say something. <laughs> so <Wow>. go ahead. <laughs> can, can I get a copy of that? <laughs> Pass that down. <laughs> I've never been one for long speeches, as most people here would realize. And I, tonight will be no exception. I made a few bullets, the issues that I wanted to touch on. Um, Anne's comments are most welcome. Thank you very much. The, uh, you hit a lot of the areas that I didn't bother to, but uh, well, it's nice to have him said. I, I really do appreciate that. But it has been an honor and a privilege to serve the, the, residents, of, uh, the residents of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, there are so many capable people in this town, and I had the good fortune of being elected twice, so I say thank you for that. 
During my six and a half years, I got to meet some very special people, and one group that comes to mind immediately <laughs> was the opportunity to go to Fort Williams Park with uh, Manager McGovern, and we met uh, a bunch of Purple Heart veterans that were meeting there. But it, it, uh, all through town, serving on the council, you do get to meet so many people. It just, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And as I always did try very hard to make sure I came to my meetings prepared. Um, even my last meeting, I was out today doing site walks, and Doug can attest to that, that I was out there checking out the lots to make sure I knew exactly what we'd be talking about. I, I took the job seriously. And uh, Ann said, I always tried to vote for what I thought was in the best long-term interest of the town. Uh, sometimes took a little flack for it. Um, hopefully people will get over it eventually. But I, I voted my conscience. Um, I want to thank all of my fellow citizens for giving me the six and a half years that I wouldn't trade for anything. I really have enjoyed it. Um, would have run again other than uh, it has been a problem with my back and, and trying to do, keep a full-time job and this just a little too much at the present time. I do want to thank my fellow councillors, both past and present. They've been a, a real joy to work with. I uh, couldn't ask them to work with a greater bunch of people. I've seen councils in other communities where acrimony was the rule of the day, and that typically has not been the case here on as long as I've been on the council, and I assume for, for a long time before that, and hopefully will continue. Uh, I want to thank uh, all of the people who have come up to me um, in sincerity and said, th uh, thank me for my service, but also told me that they were very disappointed that I was not going to be continuing that they enjoyed listening to my comments and felt that I did bring a common sense approach is, and that's just what I tried to do. Um, and there was, I even got a card in the mail this past week that uh, if you're watching, friend, I, I really did appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so I want to thank um, my fellow councillors, the manager, for all of his work and time that he put in uh, on different issues that I had questions on and the, the Cape Elizabeth Town staff. You, the taxpayers of this community have uh, one of the best staffs in, in the state, and they can be proud of them. If I missed anyone, I thank you to you also. And for what it's worth, I'm not throwing my signs away. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome, and thank you very much for all your service. OK. Um, Town Council goal status update. Manager? Uh, thank you, Ann. Uh, just a quick comment on something Jack said about not throwing his signs away. I'm also reminded that in addition to Jack, uh, we have an elected official also retiring uh, this month, Henry Adams uh, from the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Henry served as a town councilor back beginning in the mid-70s, and then what, two years ago, maybe? A mm. year and a half ago, ran the school board and uh, was elected. I, you know somewhere around the age of 80, I'm not sure what, but uh, maybe in uh, many years, Jack, I won't give you your age, but <laughs> maybe many, many years you'll be back. So the manager not being involved in politics, I can't say too much positive in case you do run again when you're 80 <laughs> years old. Anyway, you asked me to speak about goals, and thanks for the diversion, uh, allowing me to do the diversion. Uh, the council each year uh, prepares goals uh, around the beginning of the council year, and tonight, you know, marks the end of the council year. Uh, you know, it's, it's the reason uh, new councilors are stepping on. Uh, uh, Jack is, uh, his term uh, ends at this point. And so it's, it's appropriate to look at how well you followed your goals and uh, you, you focused on. This has been an unusual council year and it's been the longest council year in history uh, by calendar because the council year changed. This was the first year we had a November election for town council before it had been in, uh, in June and all the terms were extended and the council year was extended. So they, as a result, the goals had a little bit more time to be worked on and I think uh, council made uh, great progress on them. And I'll, I'll quickly go over, go over them. Uh, the first major goal was to ensure that quality services and programs are maintained with as minimal impact as possible property tax rate. And, uh, that involved the council setting targets for the fiscal year 2006 budget. Uh, which was set and was adhered to. It was the whole issue of looking, benchmarking our cost against uh, other communities was part of your goal. That, that was done. Uh, working uh, to look at 
opportunities for regional cooperation that have expenditure savings. A number of things have been done. Uh, it involved, particularly, it, it seems like a long time ago now, but it was during this council year, the defeat of uh, the Pulaski referendum. And while you know the, the defeat was was you know what happened, it just as important was the citizen involvement within Cape Elizabeth and the citizen leadership in Cape Elizabeth that became leadership statewide on that issue, including Ian, uh, you know, who was actively involved in that as a member of the MMA executive committee, as well as. Uh, so many of the citizens who ended up working as well for the Citizens United statewide as well as working here in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the council wanted to look at all the different special funds. They did that and you know many others that I'm, I'm just skipping over for in the interest of time. Uh, another goal was to increase opportunities for interaction with the town council with boards and commissions. That was done with a couple of different workshops with different groups and uh, I think you know particularly in the latter part of the year you had a lot of interaction uh, with the various boards and commissions. Uh, something Ian just mentioned in relation to Jack's uh, interest, continuing implementation of the master plan for the Gulf Crest Trails. The master plan was adopted and there's now a beautiful bridge as a result of the federal grant, as a result of work by the Conservation Commission and others, uh, the planner, uh, that extends over the Spurwink River and uh, it, the teams at the high school are all using that and it's been extremely successful. Again, happened as a result of a council goal. Uh, the council looked at waste handling issues in Cape Elizabeth and regional waste systems. Had two, I think, two or three workshops on that, and at your last meeting, uh, approved a continuation of RWS. But you also, during that process, really encouraged RWS to reform itself. Uh, Carol was involved in that, and others. And the RWS is doing so much better than it was a few years ago in terms of its <coughs> operation and its responsiveness to the communities. Uh, you wanted to look at all the town-owned properties for possible sales uh, and realize at least 75000 in revenue from the sale of town property. Uh, as a result of that goal, almost half a million dollars was actually realized in, in property sales uh, since that goal was adopted. You also, one of the goals was to explore options for looking at retirement uh, alternatives uh, for employees in terms of defined benefit, defined compensation, and th those issues are still ongoing. But uh, you know, all in all, it's, I think, you know, my opinion, and it's not really up to me, but uh, uh, I think the council followed its goals more religiously than it ever has, focused on them constantly, and I think it's a, you know, it, it shows that it's a good thing to do every year. I look forward uh, to the new council meeting in, uh, uh, whenever you meet, early in the year, or December sometime, I, I don't think the date's been set, uh, of when you actually come in with, with your suggested goals the next year. I look forward to hearing what those are and uh, working with you and also working with the staff to uh, help you implement those goals. So, thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your, your help and your staff's help has been instrumental to the council achieving many, if not most, of our goals. So thank you. Are, were there any questions for the manager or comments on that? Okay. Did you have any other manager's no. report items? Okay. Okay, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. It's at this point in the agenda and then later on, but right now, anyone who would like to speak to the council on any matter that is not already on the agenda can come forward to the podium and uh, state their name and address and speak to us on whatever. So now's your chance. I see no one standing up, so uh, we will move on. Um, the first thing on our regular agenda is a public hearing um, on proposed changes to chapter 4 of the Co Code of Ordinances. This has to do with item number 226 on our agenda um, and the ordinance refer ordinances refer to the duties and responsibilities of the Board of Trustees of Thomas Memorial Library. So I'm going to declare this public hearing open and ask that anybody who would like to speak to us on this matter come forward to the podium and state your name and address, please. Okay. Um, is there anyone here from the library? I yes, can't Ed, see. Yeah, Jay. Oh, sorry, you're, there's a sort of a crowd. Did you, did you need to say, any, want to say anything, Ed or Jay? I have no necessity. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I'll declare the public hearing closed. Um, that was quick. And now we're on item 226. Do I hear a motion? I'll move to amend the revised official code of the Cape Elizabeth 
ordinances relating to the duties and responsibilities of the Board of Trustees of the Library as more fully set out in our agenda. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Ed. Thank Please pass along our thanks uh, to the Board of Trustees. Our next item has to do with item number 227, updated general assistance ordinance and appendices, and we are having a public hearing on this item also. So the same rules prevail. If anybody would like to step forward, I'm declaring the public hearing open. And please come forward if you'd like to address us and speak at the podium. Okay. Seeing no one coming forward, the public hearing is closed. Do I hear a motion on item number 227? I'll move that the Town Council adopt the Maine Municipal Association's recommended general assistance ordinance and appendices with the exception that the town shall abide by the overall maximums and not by the housing maximums. Is there a second? Second. And moved and seconded. Is there discussion? I have a question for the town manager. Mr. Manager. Uh, yeah. Mr. Backer, Councilor Backer. <laughs> um, can you explain the abiding by overall maximums and not by the housing maximums? Uh, yes, I will. Uh, within the, the general assistance ordinance uh, as proposed by the Maine Municipal Association, Association each year, uh, there's, there's a maximum allowance that, that a family or an individual can get for a month. There's also many sub-maximums within that. You can't get any more in the area of food. You can't get any more than this amount in the area of housing. You can't get any more in you know, the power area. Because housing in Cape Elizabeth tends to be more expensive than others, we would give the full assistance, if they wanted to go solely to housing, we would uh, exceed the recommended housing allowance as long as the overall maximum was not exceeded, that that uh, entitlement under the policies would be for the month. Any follow-up? Okay. Thank you. No, okay. no follow-up. Thank you for that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up is uh, item number 228-0405, which has to do with a Stony Brook Road, Paper Street, and town-owned lot. And I know there's a certain amount of interest on this issue, but I would ask the manager to introduce this, please, and make any recommendations that he... Do you mind if I talk about both items at the same time? If that's okay with the council, is that all right? Be, because they're very close to each other. For those watching on TV, the next item, 229, it has to do with the Ocean View Road, Paper Streets, and Town Old Lot, and we will be dis the manager will be discussing them in, at once. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this issue has, has been evolving and continuing for, I think, about three, three years. We, we received uh, letters in the area from folks that were immediate abutters indicating interest in purchasing, pro purchasing property and or uh, vacating the paper street. Some of those letters date back as, as much as three years ago uh, that we have in our files. Uh, at, then a couple of years ago, as mentioned going back to the council goals, the council asked us to look at all the town owned properties to see which ones perhaps are surplus so that we could, you know, quite frankly, bring some revenue in uh, to, to the town coffers to restore the surplus to help the land acquisition fund uh, and to, you know, not hold things that we really don't need to hold. Uh, th there was also a, a paper street study that was <coughs> a few years ago, and the council looked at all the different paper streets that ought to be uh, retained for different purposes. That was looked at by the Planning Board and by the Conservation Commission. Uh, these particular paper streets, both on Stony Brook Road and on Ocean View, were recommended for retention at that time uh, because of neighborhood issues that were concerned, uh, that were expressed, as well as uh, for potential greenbelt access into the future. 
Uh, subsequent to that, as you know, as I mentioned, the, it just in more recently, the council was looking at uh, different lots to sell, and they identified the lot on Ocean View Road and the lot on Stony Brook Road as potential sale, but noted that they were both under 10,000 square feet, which is the amount that is needed in order to make a lot buildable. However, it was believed at the time uh, that by vacating the Paper Street, when you vacate a Paper Street, half of the land of the Paper Street goes to one party on one side, half goes to the other side. It was believed that they would then have at least 10,000 square feet. Uh, I think that's the overview before I get to the issues involving particular lots. Uh, on Stony Brook Road, what we have is uh, a neighborhood that's, that's well settled in, uh, probably been there I know, shortly after the turn of the previous century. Uh, and uh, this was a lot that wasn't built upon because it was uh, smaller, it didn't, wasn't uh, very deep, it uh, had some wetland characteristics, had some rock characteristics, it was lower than many of the other lots uh, in the area, certainly lower than many of the other lots around it. Uh, what, you know, if, you, if we go back to what the original plan was in vacating it, I think there were two issues. One was the interest of an abutter who has a driveway that's on the paper street with, with not an issue, not a concern with the town, uh, who you know, was looking at it for you know, possible opportunities for construction or you know, other activities to, you know, uh, concerned about, you know, I'm sure concerned about not having uh, their actual driveway on their own property. Uh, the other issue was, you know, back, as I mentioned, is an opportunity to gain revenue. Uh, I see a representative of the planning board here. The planning board looked at this and uh, heard, I, I think you heard quite a bit from the neighbors and from uh, other folks in the area. And, you know, th there wasn't a rousing uh, <laughs> feeling that the town ought to dispose of the lot. And, uh, you know, I think had, you know, and there were issues, you know, trying not to separate the two issues. Uh, one of what the planning board ended up recommending, and you know, the planning board representative, Mr. Sherman, could give you more details on that. But anyway, they recommended that the Paper Street on the on the side of Dr. Simon's property on the the westerly side uh, be abandoned, and the one on the easterly side be retained. Uh, they also recommended that the lot uh, in the middle that the town owns acquired at some point U3-125, I think it is, be, uh, have a conservation easement placed across it. Uh, the, looking at that recommendation, you know, it's well-intentioned, obviously, but it, it, but it doesn't do what the intent was to do, and that was to, uh, to you know, in essence, uh, help our coffers. It doesn't help that issue by, uh, uh, by selling that lot off. Uh, it also, I believe, doesn't help Dr. Simon's family because if the Paper Street is cut in half and it uh, becomes under conservation control and, you know, there's no vehicular access allowed, it causes issues and difficulties with, you know, does the driveway survive in that area and some of those different issues. So, you know, I think you, you don't vacate, you know, because back to the debate of three or four years ago, you don't vacate paper streets unless you're absolutely positively sure that it's in the best interest of the community to do it. Otherwise, there's no harm in retaining your interest. It still gives you the right to look at it in the future. It still gives you the right to uh, vacate it at some point in the future. So, you know, in, in the case of Stony Brook Road, I don't see that this, this compelling town interest in, in abandoning the rights that the town has and, you know, believe that, you know, you, 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 you ought to, you would only want to do that with, with, with a strong certainty that it's the right thing to do. If there's doubts, I don't think it's the, the thing to do and if there's, there's other questions. On the, the ocean view, that's Stony Brook is the, my outline of uh, what I wanted to say on that. On, on Ocean View Road, uh, you know, the lot is, is a better lot, and, you know, there's, there's neighbors there as well who express concern, there's neighbors as well who express interest in acquisition. Uh, there's, uh, there's also an issue that uh, Doug Miller has discovered, uh, who's, who's an engineer, who's one of the abutters, and he has a letter here to that effect. Uh, I heard about it this morning, uh, 
and that he looked back at the 1907 original subdivision plan, I think that's the right year, and discovered that you know, even with the Paper Street abandonment, it doesn't quite get up to 10,000. The, he's looking at the original subdivision plan, which shows a different amount of footage than the town assessor's plan show, which we're doing. Uh, so in other words, it, it doesn't come up to the 10,000. So we get into this other situation, that even if we abandon the paper street, then uh, you're into the situation that we can't go back to the reason that we're abandoning the paper street to begin with. There's also an additional issue in that the planning board recommendation provided that we, we want to retain an easement over the paper street that would be abandoned in, the, in that area. The, 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 the difficulty and challenge with that is, you know, if you're going to put an easement over a paper street, it's the equivalent of keeping the paper street anyway. There's, there's really no difference uh, between the two. And so again, I think the, the Ocean View Road issue follows, you know, the, some of the same issues as Stony Brook Road. If there's no compelling reason to do it, if there are questions, there are uncertainty, you know, you, you have a couple of points. We could go to quite a bit of expense to, to get some of those questions answered, for, to send a surveyor out, to find out if 1907 is right, if the assessor is right, <coughs> and all those issues. But, you know, do, you know, the, in the, the issue of the Stony Brook Road, we could go out and get a wetland study done, some of the other issues that folks have raised. But, you know, my view is, you know, if, if we're not, I can't see spending more money at something that's not likely to happen. Uh, because of all these different issues and because, you know, it's, it's shifted the focus of what we're able to accomplish based on where we are now. So it would be my encouragement to the town council uh, that after, you know, you've had some opportunities for discussions that you not schedule a public hearing in January and you just, you just kill this thing and by tabling it indefinitely uh, and avoid the, the... Kill both. Kill both with, without the, the additional trauma and the, the concerns and the, uh, you know, the, the citizen opposition that there is based on something that in the end really has little benefit to the town when you do it based on all the, the proposed restrictions of the planning board and based on, you know, some of the, the real facts, the, what potentially are facts based on what Dr. Miller is done. Okay. Thank you. Do you, are there any questions for? Yes, I had a manager. question for the manager. It was my understanding <coughs> a number of years ago, in fact, I think it was on the Conservation Commission at the time, that part of the reasons for identifying these paper streets was that there was a state law that said that within a certain period, date, the paper streets, if, they, if you did not put easements on them that you showed you had a specific town need for it, that they were going to revert to the abutters. And has that been removed? Or if we don't put an easement, or if we don't say we have no interest or whatever else, will that revert to the abutters anyway? No, the council action of about three years ago retained the rights that the town had in those paper streets. That was the, that was the intent of going through that whole exercise, was to ensure that those rights were retained and to evaluate those that, within which we didn't want to retain rights. And there were only a few of them that were abandoned at that point as a result. We didn't, okay, so. Or vacated, I should use the right term. Okay, any other questions for the manager? Okay. In order for us to have any discussion, I don't want to entertain any tabling motions. So I'm not recognizing anybody that makes a motion to table at this point, just so the public knows, because then there could be no discussion. Um, but uh, for the purposes of discussion, mm -hmm. I will move as chair, just not because I'm supporting it, but just so that we can discuss it procedurally, um, I will move that we, what? Uh, I will move that we discuss these two matters. Is I'll there a second, second for that? Motion. <laughs> okay. All in favor of discussing this? Well. Okay. It just gets it on the table so we can talk about it. Keeps it on. Okay. So, is there anything any counselor would like to say on this, Councillor Moles? I'd like to say a number of things on this. Uh, Coincidentally, because I just happened to be at the planning board meeting the night that this was discussed. <clears throat> and I thank uh, the manager for giving us the background of these issues, uh, but I also ask that he um, leave it to the elected town officials to make the final decision on what we do with these uh, two town-owned lots. Uh, also, as we go through this discussion, I want to make it very clear that I am completely opposed to tabling this matter indefinitely because I think the public 
has a right to have a public hearing on this in front of the town council and let all their views be heard and then we can make a decision or even table it at that point. But I think it would be wrong to not give the public an opportunity to come forward and have all their views be heard in front of the council. Uh, let me start by saying, <clears throat> in specific to the Stony Brook Road, I have looked at the property, I've looked at the maps, I've looked at Mr. Simon's property. If the paper street on Mr. Simon's side was abandoned, he would be picking up 20 feet. Uh, that 20 feet would be his, it would not be subject to the conservation easement. The conservation easement, if one was, or development easement, if one was to go forward, would be on the remaining town-owned lot and would not affect Mr. Simons in the way that the manager might have presupposed. Uh, mm -hmm. That would give Mr. Simons the ability to actually have his driveway on his own land. Right now, he has his driveway in the paper street. He has full rights to the use of that paper street and would retain full rights to the use of that, his driveway being there, uh, you know, without any issues. However, at a later date, Mr. Simons has said at other meetings, he may want to attach a garage to his house. Well, right now, he only has 18 feet between his house and the beginning of the paper street, really not a proper width due to the setbacks to put a garage in. His garage would only be eight feet wide. Um, not that he has current plans to put a garage in, but he would like to leave that window open down the road to put in a modest garage. Uh, the planning board has recommended, at our request for them to give us a recommendation, that we abandon the Westerly Paper Street and set up a permanent conservation easement. Uh, in light of what the planning board has put forward, I have had a couple of brief conversations with Chris Franklin of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. Uh, they have said to me that they're not interested in purchasing the lot. Uh, it's not within their strategic scope. However, if it would accommodate the town and if, if it, quote, fell into their lap, they would be willing to consider holding a development easement on that lot. And, you know, it would be easy for us to table this item and make it all go away, but my concern is this. The neighborhood is upset about this issue because they don't want that lot developed. If we just simply table this issue and don't have a public hearing on it in January, then a future council five or ten years down the road may decide to sell it. One council can't bind the actions of another council. Just because this council chooses not to sell it at this time, and I would never vote to sell that lot, doesn't mean that it couldn't happen down the road. And I think it's in the best interests of the neighborhood and the town, maybe not financially for tax collection purposes, but I think it's in the best interest of the neighborhood and the town to see this particular lot preserved for the future through the use of a development easement. And that is why I would support having the public hearing to discuss the item as put forward in our uh, council agenda tonight, including a discussion of both the westerly um, Paper Street and the easterly <coughs> Paper Street. Then, and again, the only reason I would like to also have the public give us some input on the easterly Paper Street is because if we left that Paper Street there, if we decided that we were going to put an easement on the rest and then abandon the westerly Paper Street, it leaves still an unknown question of what's going to happen to that Paper Street down the road. I would much prefer that as elected officials, we have a public hearing, we deal with the issue in January or February whenever it's appropriate, and, and put it to rest so that it's dealt with for the, for the long haul. On the, are we just discussing Stony Brook or do you want to also discuss Ocean View? Do both. Okay, since we're discussing Ocean, Ocean View, um, I would like to see that, that's late breaking information that that's not a buildable lot. I personally am in no no big rush to sell the lot, whether it's buildable or not. But I would, I would like to, to know, you know, why is there all of a sudden this last-minute discrepancy on the side of the lot, on the size of the lot? Um, so, you know, I'm not as concerned about the Ocean View property as I am about the Stony Brook because the neighborhood has said we don't want development on the Stony Brook lot. Uh, Mr. Simons has said 
I'd like to have my driveway on my own land and the ability, if I want, down the road to put in a garage. And I think doing what the planning board has suggested accommodates everyone's request. There you have it. Okay. If, so if I could just point of clarification to make sure I understand you. So you want to vacate the, pup, the uh, paper street on the Stony Brook, Stony Brook Road on the west side? I want to hold a public hearing to discuss the matter. That's what I want. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Other councilors? Any other comments? Councilor Lynch? Um, if I were to make a motion, I would make a motion to indefinitely postpone it. And the reason I would is because I feel that I have heard from the public over the last week. Um, we have received um, two petitions in opposition to vacating both streets. As I understand it, the, the majority of the neighborhood is opposed to vacating both streets. It strikes me that at least my own view is I'm here to represent the people of Cape Elizabeth since I don't see a compelling reason as um, identified by the town manager that says we should vacate this for the entire citizens. I think if there's no compelling reason to do it for the entire town, then we should listen to the neighborhood. Um, it strikes me that the most efficient way to stick a fork in this and have it over is to have a motion for indefinite postponement, which kills the matter. Um, if we want to hear from the public, which I think we have and I appreciate that, they're here tonight mm -hmm. and we could hear from them tonight. Personally, I think it would be unfair to the public um, in light of all that we have heard from them to keep this hanging around for another month. So I would oppose a public hearing, not because I oppose hearing from the public, but because I think I've heard from the public and I think they've said, stick a fork in it, this is dead, let's kill it tonight. So I just want to make sure that I'm clear. It's not because I don't want to hear from the public. I think I've heard from them and I think that I'm voting to do what they want to do, which is not to vacate these streets. Okay. David? Um, Councillor Lynch expressed it very well, um, and she covered most of the points that I was going to cover. I feel like we have gotten a lot of input from the neighbors on both of these lots, and the input that we've received seems to me to have been unanimously unclamoring <laughs> for us to do anything on this. To the contrary, the clamoring that we seem to be hearing through the petitions and through the emails is to preserve the status quo. Um, let it go. Let life continue as it has always been in those neighborhoods, not tamper with the public, with the uh, paper streets, and not tamper with the lots. At least that's the feedback that I'm reading into what we've received over the last several days. Um, short of some overriding town policy or interest in doing otherwise, I am a strong believer in respecting, I won't call them neighborhood rights, but certainly neighborhood interests. Um, and there is very strong neighborhood interest in both of these lots and um, the surrounding areas. With the Ocean View lot apparently not being of an appropriate size to develop, even with the abandonment of the paper street, I don't see any reason to pursue that in discussion at all unless we know with some certainty that there is the possibility of it being developed. And at this stage, without that information in hand, I see no reason to go ahead with a public hearing. Um, I think the last thing I want to say is just to comment on the uh, planning board uh, proceeding to consider this. And I just want to thank the planning board for taking up an issue that is not an easy one. Um, you know, the, Council makes referrals to various commissions and boards, and sometimes they are thorny. Um, this was one that landed in the planning board's lap. They took up an issue that brought the neighbors out uh, with no clear way to resolve it in a way that was gonna make the neighbors 
happy, although that's not always the, the goal of these proceedings, but they did a great job. Um, I didn't attend that hearing, but I watched it on television. Um, and I think the planning board does a wonderful job, and they did a great job with the recommendation that they made here. The fact that we don't necessarily follow the recommendation doesn't mean that it's not a good recommendation. In fact, as to the Stony Brook lot, I thought the recommendation was a fairly reasonable one, at least until I heard from all the neighbors suggesting that the status quo might be a more appropriate way to go. So anyway, I want to thank Chair Sherman um, and all of the planning board members for the work they did on this and to thank them for their recommendation. Thank you. Carol. Um, <clears throat> I'd have to say that I, I do disagree with uh, the recommendation that the planning board made on, on both of these. Um, and, and a good share of it is because of what the neighborhood people said. I mean, we didn't hear from anybody who favored this proposal, um, either proposal. Um, and there actually, for the Stony Brook, there, were th there are three paper streets in that area. And, and you know, on the contiguous area that, that's wet. And it wouldn't seem fair to me to offer part of a paper street to one party and not offer it, the paper streets to other parties. Um, and I think that was not something that was desired by the neighborhood or the people on the paper streets. Um, but it still seems it would be an unfair way to deal with it. I think the green, the small green spaces in the existing neighborhoods are particularly important in the northern part of the town because there aren't vent very many of them. We've, we've done a lot of work on preserving open space in the southern part of the town, uh, but the northern part was already densely developed and so there's very little left, so I think it's all the more important. Um, the only thing about the Stony Brook uh, is, is if the whole area, not, uh, that would be including the lot and the two paper streets, plus the other um, paper street, if, if the land trust were at all interested in trying to preserve that area permanently so that the issue doesn't come up again, um, if they were interested in that, that I would be interested in uh, considering, but I'd have to hear from the land trust then on, on that, that they wanted to move forward. On the um, Oakview parcel. Um, Ocean View? I'm sorry. Ocean View. What did I say? Okay. The Ocean View. Um, that particular parcel, and we are hearing just that it might be smaller than we expected um, just tonight, but that does seem to be a particularly important access to a potential greenbelt area uh, if landowners were ever interested or if those parcels were going to be developed in the future. I, I disagree with the way the planning board suggested uh, having an easement over the paper street I think that's a very narrow parcel and I don't think it would make much sense to have a house there and a access to uh, a trail on that same parcel. I think that's a very important parcel to retain by the town uh, for potential access in the future at some point. So um, I would not want to sell that either. Okay, thank you. Paul? I would like to say that uh, the planning board did a very good job in trying to uh, weigh the various interests. And I think Council Mull's points are well made. Um, however, I, I do have to agree with uh, Councilor Backer, Lynch, and Fritz in terms of um, looking at the neighborhood and looking at the interests of the people. All of the wonderful email re we received, which is very appreciated, and, you know, the fact that the people in the neighborhoods took it upon themselves to take proactive action to do something good for, for their neighbors and for their neighborhood says a lot about the citizens of Cape Elizabeth 
so I would support tabling both of these indefinitely. And it is true that they could come up in the future, but I don't think it's very likely. Jeff. I'm somewhat sympathetic as to the Simons. I drove by their house today and is there any mechanism that appears that maybe they can't even get a, 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 a variance or anything else whether if that's determined to be an op to wetland, but if by converting that street, uh, paper street, into property that they had, certainly they couldn't put a lawn area in doing that, but if they could put a garage in, I guess I would like to see that explored in some fashion. Um, I'm not sure if it needs to be done at a public hearing level, but maybe at a staff level at some point. I don't, because I can't measure it, I'm not sure they'd talk about putting the garage, but it seems like there would be space there if they owned the paper street outright. Yeah, there may be some setback issues still, I don't know. And I'm not sure that, that anybody would be prepared to even discuss that next month. Um, so if, they, if they, both of these items are tabled indefinitely, can that issue be brought back by the Simons or to be rediscussed? in the next year? I don't know procedurally, do you know? Yeah, uh, if something is tabled indefinitely, it, it sends a strong message that it, it's dead. Uh, from a procedural viewpoint, though, uh, any issue can be uh, reconsidered at the following council meeting. Uh, and secondly, there's a council rule that once something follows that, it cannot be considered again during the council year. We're at the odd position right now that this is the final meeting of the council year. <laughs> the slate is clean next month, but you know, obviously, I think you will be, be real careful. And the message is, you know, you are sending. You know, if I'm leaving, so <laughs> if, I can send any message I want. If the <laughs> I might, if the you know council wanted to still look at the, you know, just to help out the Simon's property, and did away with the thought of selling the lot, which seems to be the, the point the contested point, you know, you, you could table that to the December meeting and still hold a public hearing in January because we, we in the, you know, we'd set an extra month there anyway, trying to avoid a, a uh, December public hearing. Because December public hearings sometimes are, folks don't appreciate them because uh, of other things going on. Councilor Fritz. Um, in, in terms of what um, Councilor Roberts is attempting to do. I was just recalling um, our town planner's comments on this to the planning board about this issue. And it says that um, in constructing the garage and creating a lawn area, it would likely result in wetlands alterations. It was the lawn area that I had concerns about. I mm -hmm. didn't know where that was going to be, if that would be to the wetland side or not. Yeah. I might just add a little bit of that. We don't assess the buildability of anyone or anything without a building permit application in hand. Because we, we have found in the past, if we answer questions of that sort without a plan in hand, we, we end up usually in court with, with one side or the other. It's, we just don't answer those questions without someone having plans in hand uh, so that we can really assess what it is that, what it is that they're proposing. But without okay. the paper street, he can't bring a plan in, so he's kind of going to catch 22. Um, but I'll okay. leave it up to the council next month to decide, I guess. Did you want to say something, Mike? I just, you know, the, the individual would be welcome to come in and to meet with the code enforcement officer and to, you know, but ultimately Bruce is not going to give a definite opinion on anything I know, I know. without a plan. <laughs> we, just, we, don't, we just don't do it. So, it, get, it only gets us in trouble. Miriam, to clarify then, that individual could come in with a plan, maybe apply for a variance, and those are steps that have not been. Yeah, they couldn't actually, take, excuse me. Go ahead. They couldn't actually apply for a variance now because they, they would not have standing to do so they have uh, to on them. the paper street. <laughs> okay. Council members. First to, to Jack's comment um, for the rest of the council that may not have walked the site it was obviously when the house was built uh, 
a berm was built and the driveway was installed because immediately past the center line of the Paper Street, there's a five foot and going drop off. So it may not be the same as if it was a sloping into a wetland where you're having to bring dirt in to modify. You, you wouldn't be modifying anything because it's already in place. So that may be allowable, but we're not here to debate what the code enforcement officer may or, or may do. And I just want to say I, I really appreciate the rest of the council's thoughts on this, um, and I agree. I agree with Councillor Lynch that we have gotten a lot of input from the uh, neighborhood, but we've gotten that input by email and letters, and not that that's insufficient. However, I don't think we should run our town by email. We should give all the public a chance to come in and give us their input. That is the democratic way. It is Im I think it is improper in this particular case where we ask the planning board to give us a recommendation not to take that planning board's recommendation and set it to a public hearing and ask for more public input. And again, I am opposed to selling both lots. I have no desire to sell either of the lots. And the outcome of the next meeting would probably be the same, but I think everyone should have their chance to be heard in front of the council. Other comments? Well, as chair, I have discretion to hear from people. This is not a public hearing, but I am sensitive to <coughs> the idea that uh, people need to be heard, want to be heard, and I, I agree with um, all the councillors that we have heard a lot on this uh, matter. And I would, as I said, it's not a public hearing, so we're not going to have a, a public hearing, for those of you who may not know the difference, is when it's a formal legal proceeding so that everyone who wants to speak can get up in a line, basically, and speak for a few minutes on whatever they want to speak on. Um, I would be willing, if there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak for or against, and I'll separate these just for the purpose of our hearing, if there is anybody who would like to speak for or against the Stony Brook Road matter and then the Ocean View Road matter as to whether, um, you know, you, what, your, what your thoughts are, anything you want to tell us, what your thoughts are. It seems to me, from what I'm hearing, that uh, the consensus of six counselors is that we would prefer to just kill it tonight. Um, Councillor Moles would prefer to uh, extend the process to January uh, to have a formal public hearing on it, but frankly I'm, I'm not hearing much support. What I'm hearing support for is killing it from the public. I'm not hearing support for Let's drag it out another couple months and then kill it. I think I personally think from my conversations with people that they'd rather just kill it tonight, which is what would be happening if we tabled it. So if there is anyone from the public on item 228, which is the Stony Brook Road one, I would ask you to please be brief. But if you'd like to come forward and speak for vacating the Paper Street and then against vacating the Paper Street, um, Please feel free to come forward now. I don't want to stifle anybody who wants to give their remarks in person before the council takes a vote. Yes, sir, please come forward. And if you could state your name. Sure. I'm, I'm Sprague Simons. I'm, I live adjacent to 71 Stony Brook. And I, as a, you know, we've heard these arguments before in, in the planning board. And I thought it was very, uh, Mr. Sherman, you, the planning board was very thorough and fair in thinking of the different ideas that could accommodate the interests of a variety of groups of people, myself included. And like my neighbors, as I said in the last, in the planning board meeting, I don't want the land adjacent to my property to be developed. I think it's a beautiful piece of land. Um, I appreciate um, Council Member Roberts' uh, efforts to think about, um, is there a variance that can bring the property that I already use for the, for the, um, Park or the driveway into ownership with my house, so that um, is there some way that you guys can think out of the box and try to think of a creative solution that will serve the needs um, of all the members of the community? Um, I, I know that you've heard from a lot of people who don't want 
uh, the land vacated. And I agree with those people. I agree with my neighbors. I don't want any acrimony among my neighbors. Um, I would like to be able to park it in my own driveway. I don't have any plans at this point to build a, a parking garage at some point after last winter being my first winter here. I would like to be able to maybe park my car under some place where I don't have to uh, shovel it off every time. Um, I, I am not looking to purchase the land, um, to do any extravagant landscaping or anything. There's just a piece of property that I park on already. And um, you know, in the interest of being a good neighbor, I would hope that the council will consider that point of view as well too, that maybe I could bring that into my ownership and that there could be a slight variance. As Councilmember Mole said, it's, you're talking about 10 feet that I don't own. The rest of it drops off. I'm not looking to put a huge, a huge addition onto my house. I'm not interested in doing landscaping next to my property. I'm not interested in the property next to me being built upon. I'm interested in owning the, sl the slice of driveway that was built before I bought the house and being able to park there and maybe at some point in the, in the future be able to do a, a breezeway or something where I could park my car under to make my life a little bit easier in the, in the winter. I don't have any interest in creating any acrimony with my neighbors. Um, and I appreciate the people of, of the planning board trying to think of a creative solution and, and your willingness to think about this tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Hi, I'm Susan Payne, and I presented the uh, petition last time to the planning board. And I won't go over all the reasons that the people in the neighborhood don't want the land to be developed, because I really appreciate everything that's Excuse, said. excuse me. You're talking about the Stony Brook. The Stony Brook. Okay. Yes, that's right. checking. Um, I did want to bring up some concerns, though, that I think remain even after the discussion that's taken place tonight. One of the planning board members said that he felt that by vacating this paper street, the council might be opening a can of worms that would lead it into difficulties. And this is not the neighbor's issue so much as it is something I think should be thought about. There are the three paper streets there. There's the one behind, on the other side of the stream, which I think neighbors would want to somehow be divided and get rights to. And so it's not just that one paper street that's being potentially in play here, as I understand it. Um, one of the councillors said, if it ain't broke, why fix it? And I think that nobody's really asking Sprague not to park on the driveway, and nobody has raised that issue as far as I know. He's still free to park on the driveway. It, as I understand it, is potentially an issue if he decides that he wants to build a breezeway or a garage. And we're not sure if there is enough space for that. And the, um, a couple of things really concern me. One is that if there were some variance given just for building the garage or building the a breezeway on that land and there were no other action taken, my understanding is that that land now is 9,966 9, square feet. This is what the Maureen O'Meara said at the planning board meeting. It just needs 34 more square feet, as I understand it, to be a buildable size lot. So my concern is if if there were some variance given on part of that paper street and nothing were done to protect that land, it might become buildable size and at some point be sold or, or built on. And even though it is quite a wet area and there's a stream through there, we know that there have been other properties in Cape Elizabeth that have been very wet that have been built on. Um, and I, I would very much appreciated the recommendation of the planning board because I did think that that captured the spirit of the discussion in terms of trying to accommodate Sprague and trying to protect the land. My concern is even though it was written that first there would be an easement on the land and then the paper street would be vacated, that I'm concerned it might open that land up to be developed somehow. And I really appreciate the work that people have been doing talking to the land trust. And my understanding is they wouldn't go after that land, but they might take it if it were given to them. So I'm wondering if, if this does proceed, it does sound like people are not that interested in trying to fix something that isn't broken. But if it does proceed, I would hope that somehow there might be some way of first assuring that there'd be some entity that could take over that easement and then the paper street be vacated. Right now that's the way the recommendation is written, but I'm very concerned that something might fall through the cracks and it might end up being developed. 
So thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, that was on Stony Brook. If there's anybody who'd like to speak on Ocean View, come forward, please. <clears throat> My name is Chuck Waite, and uh, I, I'm hoping that everyone had got the uh, handout today. There should be, everyone should have a handout that's got Charles and Lisa Waite in the upper left-hand corner that I, that I had uh, passed out earlier. Um, and uh, my wife, Lisa, and I own two parcels of land, one of which is a half-acre house lot, and directly behind it is a three-and-a-half-acre um, uh, wood lot. And that's the lot I think uh, Carolyn had mentioned that the town is trying to get to with this, even, with this easement, uh, our, our private property. And um, the, the reason that, uh, that I'm here tonight is because as a result of the October 19th planning board meeting, Lisa and I came to find out that um, in fact there is already a, a published trail that has been marked across our property uh, that they labeled as an existing trail. And then on the other length of the property, there's a potential trail on our private property. And all of this is, was done without our knowledge, uh, without our consent, without our permission. Um, and so the first thing that we'd like to ask is that the part of it, if you flip to the last page of the handout that, I, that, I, uh, that you should have in front of you, you can see that at the bottom of that property, there's a red trail. That's, I, I believe that's the nomenclature on the... Uh, green belt map that indicates that there's an existing public access trail. Uh, as at the very minimum, we'd like to have that removed because that was something that was done without our permission, and um, uh, that's private property, and we bought it in order to maintain our privacy. So that we would re really like removed, but ideally, we'd like all of these trails removed. Um, if these trails had been uh, ha were, were being kept track of by the town council, you know, in some room where it wasn't available to the public, that would be one thing for planning purposes. But because these things have been uh, designated in the way they have and then published and then sold for quite some time to the community at large, uh, you know, starting in early 2000 sometime, we started seeing people coming through our property that we actually didn't know. That was really the first time we started seeing people that we didn't know. We have no problem with neighborhoods, kids going through, because they do do that. They start at one end and they skip through our property to get to the bus station, to the bus stop. And that happens all over Stony Brook. Um, but uh, we do have a problem when we start seeing people that we don't know walking around, kind of not knowing where they are in the property. Um, we have no problem with the green belt system. We, we think it's great, we think it's a great idea. But if something is going to be designated on private property, in my opinion, um, the owner ought to be apprised before it's done and certainly before it's published uh, and sold as a document to the community or whoever else wants to buy it. Um, so w what I'm requesting, what Lisa and I are requesting is that, is that those trails be removed, even the potential trail be removed. And we're hoping that uh, as an alternative, you might consider uh, a trail that moves up uh, along uh, the length of Ocean View Road onto public property um, that, that uh, I believe that abuts the end of Ocean View Road. And I've talked to some people uh, in, in the town hall and they've indicated that's pretty wet, that's wet land over there and it's difficult to get across, but it's still public property. And I would think that it's worth a look before automatically assuming that you ought to go across private property, particularly without consulting the owner first. I, I would think pr public property ought to be the first thing you look at, even if you have to build a footbridge across it to, to uh, to uh, provide access to the trail system. So that's, that's really all I had to say. Are there any questions about the map or any clarifications? Karen? I, well, I don't really have any question, but is it possible to comment on? Sure, why don't we hear from members oh. of the public just yeah. so we don't get confused. Thank you very much, Thanks sir. Very much. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on Ocean View Road? Honorable Chairman, and Councilors, my name is Douglas Miller. I live at 70 Ocean View Road, uh, next to the uh, uh, proposed um, uh, Paper Street that's proposed to be vacate, vacated. And I'm, I'm here, perhaps on behalf of my neighbors, 
I, um, I helped circulate the petition that I think you all have received um, with 60, over 60 names on it. It's been distributed. I put together a small map. The gray one in the middle is the Paper Street. The blue ones are the locations of the signatories. Um, there was a significant outpouring of concern over this parcel. One reason I was not at the public hearing or the, uh, the workshop, I was notified with this uh, note from the planning board that they're going to have a meeting and it said um, public comments are not generally received at workshop sessions. So I, I guess they don't need to be there and I was out of town on business. So unfortunately I wasn't there. But I, I got a call from the neighbors and said, geez Doug, you know what they did at the planning board last night? I said no, I knew they were going to address it. Um, so I started to look into it obviously, I, I had a concern. My, uh, Mr. McGovern mentioned um, I'm an engineer. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's an affliction that I have. On, on the last page of, of the document that you have, it's paper clipped, and I think you got it this evening. I did an engineering analysis. Uh, as a professional engineer, I've been trained in survey. I'm a water quality engineer, so I typically don't do this, so it's not stamped. Um, the numbers speak for themselves. This parcel is, uh, is, is about. Um, depends on whether you believe the, the 1907 deed or the tax assessor's records, the 1907 subdivision plat or the, or the tax assessor's rep, records, it's either 8,250 square feet or 8,150 square feet, um, as shown on the top there. Uh, I won't quibble about those 100 square feet at the moment. I asked Maureen O'Mara, I went to the planning board to get the, the planning office to get some information. She said, well, I looked at the tax maps, the tax map said, 8662. Well, that's that's where um, four or five hundred or more feet was in a, a problem on the site. So I said, okay. I looked a little further. Looked at the tax map, measured with an engineer scale, 35 foot um, uh, paper street, 35 foot paper street. I spoke to Maureen. Well, most streets are 50, so I assumed 50, and that's how she did her math. So there was some ways that she got there, legitimate ways she got there, but I, I got there a different way. I used the, the, the old maps and I came up to, when you add it all together with the right numbers or the wrong numbers, or the best numbers we can get, it's still under 10,000 square feet. And that's the point I really wanted to make. There's uh, many signatures, there's some, some things you can look at here, you can look at the bullets, uh, neighborhood values, the, the buildability of the lot, the environmental issues. Um, I think they all speak for themselves. I won't need to. I just want to talk about the math. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question for the, for the manager. Is there, is there a way, and I'm talking about the uh, Stony Brook issue now. I feel confused about um, Dr. Simons's issue. Um, I am sympathetic to his issue, but I am also sympathetic to the uh, neighborhood not wanting the lot uh, next to his lot be developed. Do we actually know? I know we don't until he's caught in a catch-22 in that apparently he can't get any sort of professional opinion from Bruce Smith unless there's a building permit, but he doesn't have standing to get a building permit unless the paper street is vacated, but I don't want to vacate the paper street just to like find that out. It, can you shed any light on this? Do we have any idea where the property, I too drove around the neighborhood in case of any of you thought I was casing the joint. I drove around the neighborhood last night at dusk and then went back this morning so I could see it in brighter light. And it was unclear to me where the property line was and I also don't know how wide the paper street is. You know, is it, do we have any of that information? If I, if I might, okay. Paper Street is 40 feet wide. Okay. You know, generally, the, you know, when an applicant is looking for something, the town doesn't go to the expense of having the surveys done, of having the wetland I, analysis done. I understand that. Uh, you know, if, if you, you know, want more information, there's no reason that you mm -hmm. can't table this to another meeting without, you know, short of tabling indefinitely. That's an option. The options are limitless, uh, what you can do. <laughs> Uh, it's the frightening concept yeah, you know, of it all. Yeah, they always are. Uh, you know, you know the, one, of, one of the challenges, and, and I, I don't mean this to be uh, critical, is it doctor or minister? It's doctor. 
doctor. Okay. Uh, but I don't mean to be critical of, of Dr. Simons, but you know, it's, it's a little bit unclear looking at the record of exactly what it is that he wants to do. I hear breezeway, I hear garage, I hear driveway, I hear whatever. And, you know, I think if there's something that he, he wants to do, you know, while Bruce can't give him a definitive answer, Bruce can sit down with, him with, with what it is that he actually thinks he might want to do. Excuse, excuse me, come um, forward, please, because people on TV won't be able to hear what you're saying. I'm sorry, you said that it wasn't clear what I wanted to do. It, just, it simply said in my petition that I asked for more than a year ago, it simply said to vacate the paper straight with the hopes of someday potentially building a garage, maybe. Um, so that, that's the original petition. These other paper streets, I had no idea about them <laughs> at the time. I have nothing to do with them. I have no rights to them or anything. I was simply advised that this might be a good idea for me to, to do this um, for myself to try to get ownership of the driveway. My primary purpose is to try to get ownership of the driveway. The secondary purpose is I hope maybe someday I could build a garage, but I understand that that's up to whether or not that passes the variance of the planning board, which could be years away. So I don't have any expectations for that right now. A greater goal for me is to keep harmony in the neighborhood with my neighbors. If there was some imaginative, creative way that I could take ownership of the small sliver of land that, is, that I drive, that I park halfway on right now, I'd appreciate that. That's all I was really saying. So that's the original petition. I just wanted to answer that. Thank you, sir. Did you want to say anything else? No, I ju just, you know, I'm just trying to make sure the council understands all of its different options, all of its, and, you know, without taking sides. Uh, although, you know, my, my opinion is known. <laughs> I can keep take that back. Just want to make clear that you know if that paper street was abandoned, the the uh, whatever side it is, westerly side, the westerly paper street, you know half of it would go to to the owner of the Simon's property. The other half would go to the owner of U three one twenty five, I think it is, yep. which is the town. The town at any point in the future could take any piece of that property and do whatever it wanted with it be it conservation, be it for some other type of, you know, sometimes, you know, we're, we're widening a corner, and, you know, you need a piece or a drainage structure or, you know, even a culvert, you know, all those things. It's okay. all those things are out there. Okay. Well, Jack, go ahead. Just a couple more quick comments on this. And the variance thing has been kind of thrown out wrong. And I started that, but a variance does not go on a paper street. It goes is granted to a homeowner who applies for something if the planning board or the zoning board feels that that's appropriate. So just I want to clear that up. And my sense was that we could, I would like to see the town council vacate the street. Uh, the gentleman was time to get his half of it. And if he wanted the other half, he could approach the town about paying a simple fee to purchase the other half of that paper street. He could put his garage on it. If it met the building code specs and everything else, there'd be no assurance whatsoever that even though if he had the paper street, that a building permit would be issued. That would be something he'd have to deal with later and with all the things that Bruce would have to look at or the zoning board if it went to that, that board. Um, and then if he decided that, that he wanted to pay for it but could put, and could put a garage up there, the town gets additional revenue, he's happy. Um, it does nothing as far as any kind of a conservation easement or, or the other piece of that land going anywhere. That would stay in town ownership. Um, so I'd like to see the council tonight just dispense with them on Ocean View, kill that however you're going to do it. I would be willing to, to move that the town um, have a public hearing on abandoning the paper street on the westerly side uh, uh, in December, January, it makes no difference to me. <laughs> Believe it makes no difference at all. And um, that way I think it satisfies most people's needs. Ocean Street, you kill it. The easterly side thing, you, you, you kill that idea. Perhaps put a conservation easement to the land trust on that piece of land. I don't think it should be buildable. And do something to help the, 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 uh, the Simons out as far as a potential to build something there. No guarantee. Could I raise one other issue? Yeah, go ahead. It's, <laughs> I might. Yes, it's a complex issue. We want to make yeah, sure I just we hear want everything. To make sure. There's a procedure in state law for abutters to be abandoning paper streets. 
The town has taken on the entire cost of this Paper Street abandonment because we thought there was a benefit in terms of the lot next to it. Uh, you know, when, when we dealt with it with uh, the Penanskis up on, up on off Trundy Road, it was always at the expense of the individual who benefited and not at the town's expense. In the case of these paper streets, all of our legal work, everything that's done, all the public noticing, which is extensive because there are very precise public noticing provisions under the law, are done by the person petitioning for the paper street abandonment. We were doing it all because the council said they wanted to look at selling the lots. I just raised that issue that, you know, the public hearing, whatever, there's quite a bit of expense involved with our attorney, with postage and whatever, and I just want you to know that, you know, unless you say to the contrary, that's still a, a town expense, mm -hmm. where it's, it's usually paid for by the, the party who's interested. I have a question, which is on the Stony Brook lot. If, if the council were to table um, the whole thing tonight, the Stony I mean, both things, but the Stony Brook road vacation tonight, so we just tabled it. Um, tabling it indefinitely kills it, kills it, um, and, until next until a new month. council until year. The, yeah. until yes. The new, <laughs> yes, until the new council year. Which I didn't year. realize, but. Um, so, you know, I'm just wondering, counselors, should we, first of all, I don't have a read, other than Jack and myself. I mean, let's get practical. Is there anyone else who wants to see anything done on the westerly side. Oh, and, and Councilor Moles. Is there anyone else who wants to see any way to address Dr. Simons' issue? Could I ask a question of the manager? When we have a paper street, are there any options other than holding it and vacating it? Do we have the ability to sell a paper street? No. no. It's a state procedure. Paper Street is owned collectively by everyone in the subdivision that, that was part of the subdivision when the Paper Street was created. However, the, the municipality is the one that, that does have the right under the law to, to vacate it, but we do not have the right to sell it. Because we do not, we, we have rights, but we don't have, we don't have really don't have correct ownership. ownership. It's owned by everyone in the subdivision. So we could vacate it, we could, by the vacation process, half of it would automatically go to Dr. Simons if there's additional land that vacates to the town lot. Again, any portion or all of that lot could be sold to Dr. Simons. Or to anyone else. Right. Or to anyone else, or right. Did you have any follow-up? Are you? Um, no, the problem, of course, with vacation, unless we put an easement on it um, in advance, is that it will make the neighborhood very nervous. They're already very nervous. It'll make them more nervous. Councilor Lynch. And that's the difficulty um, I have. I, I'm sympathetic to Dr. Simon's um, issue of parking his car, um, but like everyone else, I drove around the neighborhood, if you were wondering <laughs> On a traffic why that there. silver Subaru kept going around and around this afternoon. But um, if we vacate it, um, Anything could be built on that half, potentially. And what I'm hearing from the neighborhood is, don't vacate it. We like that empty lot. We like the woods. Our children play in the woods. And while I'm sympathetic to Dr. Simons, he bought the house, his house the way it was. He bought it with the woods there. And I'm a little bit concerned about what might happen down the road if we vacate it. Um, it just seems to me that while, while I thought six months ago as we were looking at all these issues that this looked like a good idea, I've become convinced that there's not a compelling town reason. And the neighbors have made a compelling case. So. Um, I'm, I'm sympathetic, but I, I think that Dr. Simons bought what he bought, he knew what he bought, and it's not the town's or um, the neighborhood's uh, responsibility to fix the problem that he purchased. 
when it, in fact, would take away a nice wooded lot in that neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Councilor Moles. A couple of quick issues. Um, again, we have, a, we have good public input in the form of these petitions and emails, but the original petitions that went around went around before the planning board met and before there was discussion of a permanent easement being placed on the property. And again, I think it would be wrong not to give the neighborhood a chance to think about it for a month or two, whether a permanent easement that puts the issue to rest for all time isn't what they really want. Secondly, uh, I too am an engineer. In fact, I have a bachelor's in chemical engineering and most of the paper streets in that area are 40 feet wide. Not sure why your scale showed it to be 35 feet wide, but you know a five foot difference along the length of that could make the difference on whether it's a buildable lot or not. Again, I have no intention of selling the lot. Again, I don't think that putting the easement in, going to someone else's privately owned land was of any benefit. But I think at some point the town should figure out what is the size of that lot because we've, we've gone down this road assuming it was one thing and then the night of our discussion we find out it's something else. I'd like to, you know, hear some more. Maybe the manager can ask the planning department uh, without going too extensively and to take a better look at that. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Jack, did you have a question? I'd like to just ask Councilor Lynch. I think she, I'm not sure either I misunderstood her or she's got something confused perhaps. The wooded lot that the kids play on is the one in Ocean. And the wet, swampy one is the one that has the, the driveway on it. I, did you? I suspect that the kids are in the wet, swampy one, pulling <laughs> salamanders <laughs> and lizards out, and they're playing in both lots. Okay. It, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but my kids love mud more than <laughs> dry up land. Okay. That's one, oh. one more point. I think um, Councilor Moles brings up a good point. The petition says, I do not want the town to vacate the paper streets indicated in this petition. There's 70 some odd signatures. It's actually 53. Oh, well, I have 70. Maybe it's a combination. <laughs> but anyway, the, the point is, you have the whole neighborhood signing that. And their impression, from what I've gathered from the speakers, is that if the uh, paper streets are vacated, then you'll have a buildable lot to contend with. So really what they're signing is, I don't want that lot built. That's what they're really saying, in effect, is they don't, I don't want a buildable lot in this location in our neighborhood. And Council Moles is right. If, if we table it, it doesn't do anything except push it off into the future, as far as I understand. Um, so it really doesn't solve the problem permanently, whereas an easement would solve the problem permanently. So maybe the, wor the work that the planning board went to, uh, they, it looks like they went to great efforts to come to some compromise to f create a situation where the neighbor, the, Dr. Simons is happy because he can own the driveway he parks on, and the neighbors are happy because now you will have a, a lot that's not buildable in the future. That's what I'm gathering from the comments. I, am I misinterpreting anything? May I, may I ask a question? Go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I think it's this question of the vulnerability of the lands to being developed. And, and that's what I was trying to get okay. at. If possibly so there could be an easement on the land and then the paper street be vacated or something like that just so that we're assured that that the land really is permanently protected so your preference is to get an easement so it's permanently protected that's what people are really concerned about okay, yes and i should say in terms of whether there's it's just been emails or people coming in person i think that that if you would give people a chance and people understood what these paper streets are really about especially on the ocean driveway people would are very exercised about this and people will come in in, in person. Pe people, we were under the impression no one would be able to talk tonight. There would be a lot of people here tonight if people had thought that would have been allowed the way it has been and we appreciate that. But you, but you are right. I think in terms of the people I've talked about, the main concern is making sure that land is not developed and that something doesn't slip 
between the cracks. Okay, I, now that's, thank you very much for the clarification. Yeah, right. That's what I was gathering from yeah. what you were saying. It's not what this said. Yes, but because it, it's that, what you really meant. That was all circulated before the planning board meeting because right. that's what we were faced with at that time. Understood yeah, completely. Right. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. You. Well, given that, I would, I would have to say that um, what we really should do in this case, because that's the concern of the neighborhood, the permanent protection of that land from being developed, I think that we should proceed forward as recommended by the planning board on the Stony Brook Road. Can I follow up yeah. then? Because yes. Perhaps I'm misunderstanding, but my understanding is when we vacate that street, it's not just the town owned law, it's the other half as well that the neighborhood is concerned with developing. That they're concerned. Excuse me, if, which street are we, which lot are we talking about? Stony Brook. Okay. okay. It's my understanding that the concern, and correct me if I'm wrong, is development on that whole paper street, not just the half associated with the town-owned side, but also the other half But wouldn't the other well. half go to the easement? Um, no, the other half will go to Dr. Dr. Simons. The, the westerly one? Yes. But that's... So you're developing, you're potentially developing half of the paper street. That's what I think we just need to understand. But he has, still has a 25, is it a 25 or a 20 foot setback? He has 18 feet from his house to the paper street. The paper street is 40 feet wide. He would then gain 20 feet. He'd have a total of 38 feet. And in the zoning of that area, you have to have 10 feet setback on the side and 15 feet setback and back, according to, I went upstairs and asked them uh, the other day. So at most of that 38 feet, he could have 28 feet worth of construction. Well, you can certainly get a garage in less than 28 feet from his house. Oh, and that's, that's your concern? No, my con you have 40 feet. Let's say 40 feet, just for the sake of argument, you, you have for discussion. You have 40 feet. 20 feet becomes developable. It becomes private property. It becomes no longer the neighborhood woods. That's my understanding. So my understanding is the neighborhood is concerned about the whole parcel, not just one side. And if I'm wrong, then I'd be for table could I, that. Could I ask a question here? And I wish we had Ms. O'Meara here or someone who was an expert. But um, I understand the math of what Councillor Moles was talking about, you know, the 28 feet. But aren't there also rules about wetland setback? Because that looked like it was really underwater to me. That is so would it be buildable anyways? What, that is precisely what Councillor Roberts brought up. There is no guarantee that Mr. Simons would be able to build anything on that parcel, of, on that piece, if he is awarded half Does anybody piece. know what the wetland setback is, how many feet that is? RP2. RP2, you can pretty much build right up into it. RP1, you have to be back. 250 feet? 250 feet, that's it's 250 feet. I know that. Pardon me? I know that. It's Come on, we RP. all know it's 250 feet. <laughs> For RP1? Yeah. For RP1. I'm thinking of the issue before us last June. Yeah. Well, I'm, I think we're beating this to death at this point <laughs> um, and torturing everyone in the audience as well as ourselves. Um, I have been, I was persuaded my, I'm sympathetic to Dr. Simons. However, I hadn't thought of, but was glad that Councillor Lynch reminded us that when he bought the property, he knew what it was. So I must say, even though I'm sympathetic, I'm not quite as sympathetic. Um, I'm, in, I'm in favor of just killing both of these at this point. So that's where I am on this one. I think the public has had many opportunities to provide input. I don't feel the need to torture the public by dragging this out until January and then killing it, because I think that's what's going to happen. Um, so I think I'm with uh, Councilor Moles. I know you like to have the last word, and as Council Chair, I respect that. But I think as Mary Ann was speaking, I was looking out into the audience, and people were nodding their heads, saying, no, we're not trying to keep our neighbor from having 
a garage. And I think the public deserves to come in and speak what they really meant post the planning board meeting. And the beauty of this being close to the end of the year is that the future council, with Councillor Dill and not with Councillor Roberts, will be able to bring this up again if they so desire. So if the public has a burning desire to uh, bring this forward, if, if Mr. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Simons can get a plan together, perhaps provide more information, and if the public comes out and says, yeah, we really want Dr. Simons to be able to build a garage, then they'll be able to bring it forward again. Um, but I would rather just kill it at this point, kill both of them at this point. Um, because absent such a plan, I think we're just talking theoretically. That's where I am on this. I think we need another motion. Can, um, I, w I thought we should separate the motions. <coughs> yes. So, um, so I would move indefinite postponement of, the, of item 228045, which is Stony Brook Road. And is that the same, just procedural question, is that the same as indefinite tabling? Yeah. As indefinite so tabling? Yes, so it's, it's yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Is there a second for that? Second. It's been moved and seconded. There can be no further discussion on a tabling motion, so all in favor of tabling uh, the Stony Brook uh, item 228 uh, indefinitely, please signify. Six opposed, one. Okay, that one is killed. And do I hear a motion? Well, that brings us to item number 229-0405, the Ocean View Road, Paper Street, and Town Owned Lot. Do I hear a motion on this matter? I make a motion that we table it indefinitely. Second. Ocean. Item 229045. Okay, thank you. Second. It, it, it's been seconded twice. No. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is no discussion allowed. Uh, I'm sorry. No, oh, I'm fine. I, thought, I thought you were, no. had a procedural issue with no. what I was saying. Um, all in favor of tabling it indefinitely? Seven. Seven zero. Okay. So that one's dead too. Okay, I want to thank everybody for all the time and effort you have spent on this issue. Um, and uh, I know its passions have run somewhat high, but everybody's been able to maintain a calm demeanor, and I speak only for myself, but I'm sure the rest of the counselors are pleased that um, everybody was so thoughtful in their remarks. And uh, I want to thank you. They're dead. David. Um, if I could say one thing, I know this is a little bit out of the order of things, but we went straight to the motion to table before I had a chance to say anything on the ocean view lot, and we didn't have a chance to discuss it at all after the comment um, from the public. But I was a little disturbed by what I heard from Mr. Waite about their property. Yes, this is the matter um, I was just going to mention, but go ahead, please. You know, when I went over to the two lots on Saturday and I walked down the proposed, um, what's the name of the extension there? Um, Baker. Baker Street extension. Road. And I walked down that behind the porta potty that's there currently <laughs> and, you know, hit a stone wall just not far back. And there was, excuse me. There was a sign posted on a tree that I assume was on your property to protect your rights from people walking. Well, I didn't see a, an existing trail that went on beyond the stone wall, so I was a little confused about the proposed, this whole trail system. Now, with your comments, it makes sense why I didn't see one. Um, and I am a little distressed about the fact that the town, sort of on its own apparently, has taken it upon itself to mark a private property owner's land with a trail. Um, you know, it's one thing for us perhaps to identify land as a potential source for a trail in order to approach the property owner to ask if they'd be interested and willing to participate in a trail system, but to sort of unilaterally, which apparently what happened, and I don't know the history, but by whatever means this trail ended up being marked on the Waits property doesn't 
seem to me to be proper, and I'd like to make sure that the town addresses that in whatever way is appropriate. Uh, the manager would like to respond. Yeah. I, I met with Mr. Wade on Wednesday or Thursday, I don't remember which day, and uh, you know, I agreed that it's inappropriate to have what we've referred to as a red trail on his property. Uh, I indicated we would remove it. I also indicated to work with him uh, to put up signs by the town lot indicating limits of town property. And that is what we shall do, and uh, we'll be sure that all the maps are corrected. I also do want to say that, as you alluded to, uh, Councillor Backer, is that you know, we do show proposed trails on private property throughout the town. You can't have a green belt trail plan without showing proposed trails. And I know some people don't like to see the proposed trails on their property, but it has been a long-standing town policy to show proposed trails on private property uh, because otherwise we wouldn't know, you know, eventually there'd be, there'd be no combined trail system without showing the potential of where trails might be. Councilor Moles was first then. Did you have a comment, Mike? Well, uh, the gentleman, Mr. Waite, was hoping he could respond to the manager's comment. Please come forward. Um, yes, I, I, I did meet with Mike and I appreciate it. He was very cooperative about removing the red trail. My, my only concern is that by having any trails on there, no matter what color they are, it amounts to an invitation when you publish it widely and when you sell this document. Uh, to, the, to, the, to the town or, or to whoever buys it. it. It basically amounts to an invitation to the public to come and explore this trail system, whether it's proposed or not. And the problem that I have is, yes, you're right. The, priority number one is to turn that red into orange, if, if that's all we can do. But the problem that I have is if you leave it as orange, it is still an invitation for people to come and explore our property. And it would have been better, I think, procedurally, if before you put anything down in the first place, you had at least uh, notified the, prop the private property owner. Uh, because you're going to publish this. You're, you're, you know, this is going to be something that's going to be published, and everyone's going to see it, and people are going to want to explore it. And that, that's a problem for privacy, because that trail system happens to come into our backyard. So when we're on our deck, you know, we're no more than 20 feet from where these people who are kind of not sure where they are are looking around, and often, uh, uh, a little bit embarrassed to see that we're up sunning ourselves on the deck. So. Thank you, Mr. White. Uh, Councilor Fritz. As, as I understand it, the map that has the yellow trail system that's proposed or potential is, is a working document. It's not a map that we send out to the public and, and let them know about it. It's for really planning purposes and for the the planning board to use for the. It's sold for 10 bucks. Okay. Five or 10 bucks. Yeah. Okay. I, I get the point, but it, it still is something that we use in case you decided to sell that parcel. That when it comes before the planning board, um, they can know that there, there's some continuity there and some potential there. And then. So I think it's important to keep these, part, these potential trails on a map. Um, I, ha I have one that crosses mine, and actually it's a priority potential. <laughs> so it has higher, you know, and, and, um, and so there is some possibility of that. But the, and the goal of the Greenbelt is to have areas in all the neighborhood areas where people can walk directly from their property with a short distance and uh, reach an area where they can commune with the woods. And the northern part of the town has very little of that sort of thing that's actually uh, set aside permanently. So if, if, I, if I could hopefully shed some light on this. The, um, the Conservation Commission, which is a group of unpaid citizen volunteers were the ones that helped put together the green belt plan um, and that's the document that you just held up for people who couldn't see what it was and um, it was my understanding that some of the trails that they showed in there were dreamed for trails trying to hook up different neighborhoods and you're absolutely correct it should not be marked anywhere as 
red, meaning that it's an existing trail. Um, it shouldn't be marked as red on your property. Um, I understand your concern. I think at this point, the most, the, the, you know, the cow, cat's out of the bag. I didn't know we were um, selling the, the Greenbelt plan as, as a trail map, but hmm. I'm, not, it's, I'm it's, not sure about we that. We sell all public documents for... Right, but I, 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 wasn't, sh I wasn't aware that people buy the, the Greenbelt plan as a trail map. Perhaps they do. I don't know. I'm not a big hiker. But, but I hope that by our changing the map, so converting where it shows red and turn it back to yellowish orange, that will show that it is not um, you know, a real approved plan at this point. And the manager has um, offered to have the town put up signs on the edge of the town property that says it's the limit of town property. So basically, it, it, along with your sign, I think that anybody who's out there has got to have a lot of gumption or, or they're pretty forward if they come tromping through. And we can't control what everybody does, but I, I hope we, we, I regret that this error was made and that it has affected you negatively, and I hope that what we can do will remedy it to some degree. So um, I think we need to move on. Um, <coughs> and thank Councillor Backer for bringing that matter up. I didn't want to let the, the waits think we had forgotten their issue. So um, again, thank you to everybody who has come out tonight. I don't think we'll take offense if you all get up and leave, although you're perfectly happy. I mean, we're perfectly happy to have you stay for stop signs on Murray Drive, but that may not be your, your interest. So feel free to leave if you want to. This must be the stop sign crew. Now, re now revealed. Feel free to move forward. It's like church. No one wants to sit up front. So, Okay, um, that was a long discussion, but I'm glad we had it. Um, but now we need to move forward onto item number 2300405, which has to do with stop signs proposed for Murray Drive. Would you like to introduce this? Yeah, we, we, yeah thank you, Ann. We had a petition that was uh, submitted with the names of uh, a number of residents. I didn't count the number of names, but, but anyway, they, they asked for a, a stop sign on, at one of the two intersections uh, being looked at, R Ramble and uh, Murray. I asked the chief of police to look at it and the public works director and I looked at it. We thought there also ought to be one a little bit further up the road at uh, Murray and uh, Philip. I don't know why I can't remember all these names tonight. And, and, and anyway, we uh, ended up sending out 120 notices uh, to everyone in uh, the older part of Brentwood uh, indicating that, that this was being considered, giving them the, the agenda item. Uh, indicating they could submit comments. The council's, I think, got a, about a dozen emails, maybe. Uh, there was one that I didn't get, but I saw Councilman McKinney's response uh, to the gentleman. There was one person that really didn't see the need for it, but everyone else uh, did. Uh, that was the input received. Uh, I did indicate in the notice we sent out that there'd probably be an opportunity for brief comments uh, during the meeting. And I, I know there's a couple of parties there who may have that interest. But it, it seemed as though everyone was, seems to be in favor with the exception of one email that Councilor McKinney got. Oh, yeah, actually, you all got it. He responded to it. So I have to see a copy. And I, I hope, I appreciate your hanging in. I know it's been a long evening. Um, Although we have we, lost one person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think he's just showing how exciting yes. these meetings are. <laughs> well, okay. Um, is it, the manager has introduced this. I might as well ask before we get on to our discussion and motion. Is there anybody here who would like to speak briefly on this subject? Mr. Jeff Thorak. Very, very <laughs> Thank you. My name is uh, Jeff Thorak, and um, I reside at 44 Murray Drive along with my wife, Courtney, and four young children. Um, I'd like to thank the council and the town manager and the public works director along with uh, Chief Williams for looking into this matter and, and, and honoring um, our request. Um, we've been living in our neighborhood for about three years now and um, my house happens to be located on the corner of Murray and Ramble um, and the neighborhood's grown significantly. We have about 50 
young children now in the neighborhood, and we do educate them on obeying the traffic laws and, and um, riding on the side of the road and, and trying not to dart. But um, Murray Road does have a considerable grade to it, and you know, for buses, school buses, and, and, and delivery trucks, they tend to coast down that hill at a relatively um, good good speed, and it's a concern for our family. So this is. Uh, mostly a, a safety issue for for the residents of our neighborhood and uh, um, again I just would like to thank council and, and for all of your efforts and, and the thoughtful consideration to, into into this matter and that's it thank you very much anybody else okay thanks um, do I hear a motion yes I'd like to make a motion that the um manager direct the public works to make Murray Drive and Ramble Road, as well as the Murray Drive and Phillip Road intersections, four-way stop intersections. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? <laughs> Seven. It's unanimous. Great. Thank you very much. That was a long time to wait, but <laughs> hopefully you're just so excited by the vote that you can summon the energy to <laughs> depart. <laughs> okay. Um, we're now at um, item number 2310405, Appointments Committee Report. Councillor Moles, do you have a yes. report for us? Uh, first, let me start by thanking all of the citizens who volunteer on our different boards and commissions throughout the year. And let me thank those that have come down to us and applied for the openings that we get each year at this time. Uh, we are truly blessed as a town to have such great volunteers, and it's very difficult for the appointments committee to sort through all those great volunteers and, and, and select those, especially when we have more applicants than we have openings. Uh, let me also thank Councillor Fritz and Councillor Lynch for their, their help. They co-serve with me on the Appointments Committee. Normally we would give this announcement in December, but we've had a, uh, a quick and productive Appointments Committee schedule so far this year. We still have a few openings, uh, which we'll be announcing in a minute, but for the Arts Commission, Oh, let me, uh, Madam Chairman, would you like these all at once, in pieces, by committee, or how would you like to have this done? I'd prefer to do them all at once, unless okay. any counselor, unless, well, it, hang, it, hang on, yeah. hang on, unless any counselor has an objection. Okay, we'll it, do them all It just so happens that the uh, board voted unanimously on all of these positions, so just so the other counselors know that. Uh, for the Arts Commission, uh, we have a recommendation, we have two openings, and we have recommendations of Lena Neuhauser and Susan Backer. For the Community Services Advisory Commission, we have two openings. They are Bruce Abramson and William Marshall. Uh, Catherine Fairbanks will be returning for an additional term. For the Conservation Commission, we have a recommendation of adding Richard Bowman, and returning again for an additional term would be Jonah Rosenfeld. For the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, we have two recommendations, Jim Rowe and Maureen McCarthy. Uh, also continuing on for another term would be Tina Harnden. For the Personnel Appeals Board, we recommend the reappointment of Robert Packer. For the Planning Board, we recommend the new appointment of John Siegfried and the reappointment of Peter Hottam. I hope I didn't destroy his name there. For the Riverside Memorial Cemetery trustees, we recommend the reappointment of Frank Levitt and Jesse Timberlake. For the Thomas Memorial Library trustees, we recommend the new appointment of Evan Roth and Nancy Marshall and the reappointment of Carol Ann Olson. For the Zoning Board of Appeals, we have actually sent that one out for, we have, still have openings on that board, so we are going to 
continue to work on finding people for that board, uh, as well as the Board of Assessment Review and the Recycling Committee. So uh, I, I do want to mention, though, that uh, uh, Robert Chatfield, who had been serving on the Community Services Advisory Commission, um, has done a great job and has graciously stepped down to give some other people a chance to be on that board and is hoping to be on another town board in the, in the near future. Okay. Thank you very much. So, um, did you, I, Would you like a, a motion? recap? The motion is for the town council to appoint all the new appointees and to reappoint all of the reappointees, as I just mentioned. Okay. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Okay, I'd like to add that um, uh, I would like to thank Deborah Lane for her work. She staffs this committee, and um, she's done a great job, I'm sure, of helping the whole committee. And uh, she's done know. a fantastic job of scheduling all these different people to come in on a few sparse nights for us. Having been on appointments before the appointments committee before, I know how complex it can be, and I want to thank her for her efforts. So, this staff has a question, if we might. Yes. Uh, Deborah was pointing out to me, one of the community services appointees, there's supposed to be uh, so many from the council and so many from the school board, and... Correct, okay. manager. Which, which one did the school board recommend again this year? Well, they haven't recommended anyone yet, that, to my knowledge, so we, uh, it'd be premature for the council to appoint the school board appointee. Excellent point. Good catch. We didn't recommend any community services. Yeah. Michael did not read any from that. There's nobody on our list from co no. for community services. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, so this is just a clarification. We will bring that one back in December, I hope. Okay. Go, it will go to the school board. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. I've heard no discussion. All discussion. In oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Sort of point of order. Yes. Go ahead. Council. Susan Backer happens to be related to me. Imagine that. She is my wife. <laughs> yes. And so the question is whether I'm obligated to abstain from approving her. I'm afraid that if I abstain from voting for her, that she'll abstain from speaking to me. <laughs> uh, we couldn't have that. Or worse. Well, can we divide the question? I know we just said we'd do them all at once, but. And well, if there's, there's no obligation. There is precedent. I voted my yes, wife. That's vote true. For one. Jack's wife, <laughs> Sherry Roberts, is on one of the commissions. And, and they're not is, paid positions. There is no pecuniary interest. Um, no. I don't see any reason. <laughs> Knock yourself okay. out. Vote and for not, your wife. Enough said. Okay. I don't make my husband vote for other people when I'm up for election for something, so. Go for it. Okay. Support your wife. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to object. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Moles. Okay. That uh, brings us to the time when we have citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. I see just a couple lonely citizens out there and they're not coming forward, so we'll move on. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? We don't have any, so, do we have any scheduling things to mention? I don't think we do. For once, we don't have a workshop coming up. Yeah, do you want to tell them what's on the upcoming workshop? What is the upcoming Are workshop? Are there? I don't know. I don't think they're set don't yet. Have no, set so. Something coming up with the school board, isn't it? We, have, we do have a joint meeting with the school board. It's not a workshop, but I can't. I can't remember when. <laughs> we have a joint meeting Look with the, the website. school board later this month. Yes. I thought it was Monday. Monday. Whatever. Obviously, we need to check our calendars. I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Jack said he wasn't going to adjourn, but he will. Thank you very much. Good night.